Christian, I'm from uh, CV Software. I'm here with Lukas, who is the second part, second half of the biggest uh, indie company ever. We are two persons, so <laughs> we are really a AAA studio. We have a lot of producers, managers. And uh, today we are for the first time ever going to announce that we are working on a new game and we are going to show you something. But before we do, I decided to make something absolutely special for this uh, Adventure X. We will be actually talking today, and I will be talking today, showing you some of the stuff we did in the past 12 years. Because I don't know if you know that CD software is this old. It even was named differently back then. And uh, so I will show you a bit of the journey which kind of brought us to the point we are at now, which I think might be more interesting than if we would just standardly talk about the stuff we are doing now. And I will actually show you some of the stuff you've never been able to see anywhere because it was never released or it was uh, kind of uh, bound by certain contracts, whatever. So I will do a, a little bit of retrospection of what we did and how we come to CB we are now. So thank you for staying here for this talk. And I will start in uh, 2003 when uh, I spent something like one year to write a story for the game which was called Destinies. And it was a, a game we actually started with a company called Wild War Productions, which was basically me, Lukash, here. Then it was Jonathan Vox, you might know here from England. He is behind Darko Games and the Lost Run Games. And we just uh, recently cooperated on a game called Midnight Order, which just went on the Steam. And we are pre preparing Black and Rock. So it's like uh, this guy with Matt Clark, and of course with uh, my long time friend Laura McDonald who is uh, basically uh, doing all the, all the help she can with my texts. So she's writing for me, she's helping uh, making my uh, text readable and sane and she's a great friend. So that's, that's basically this year's and I will show you what we've been cooking back then. So we are going really 10 years to, to history to see what was CB back, I will just put it on the... incredible amount of time and uh, other resources into making this, this kind of stuff. Unfortunately, it was the time of the big uh, downfall of adventure games. Uh, we had uh, three publishers, we went to E3, we presented it to publishers. Not exactly this version because we make like a three iteration, this is the oldest one. And uh, so it happened that uh, at the end uh, it was the collapse of uh, German publishing market, it was the collapse of uh, basically funding for the adventure games. So after uh, quite a few years we decided that uh, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of not uh, possible to create a game with such a scope. So this is the oldest one ever created. Uh, for a comparison I will show you, uh, I will just skip a bit forward, I will show you that we re in, uh, kind of uh, revisited the idea to uh, create this game after quite a few years. So we tried to redo the graphics by keeping the script and I'll just show you, okay, this was uh, still the old one with a multi-tool device, but I will show you what happened back then. So it was in 2011 we tried to come back to the idea of uh, Destinies with the same story but kind of improved visual visuals. Again, as you can see, this is work. The all visuals you will be seeing here are work of one person. This is Lukáš here and he does everything. So it's kind of, you can imagine if you are developers, you can imagine daunting tasks to do all the stuff just by himself. So this is how Destinies looked like uh, in 2011. 
but uh, still it was uh, for us uh, kind of impossible to do without any kind of funding. So uh, at the end of the day, we decided that uh, we have to kind of do something smaller. We have to work on the project and build up so we can maybe one day revisit the development of Destinies. So that was uh, Destinies. I just mm -hmm. closed this. And uh, it was also a time of a big depression for us because we spent many years, we spent a lot of money. I was absolutely personally broke because it was, in, you know, investing incredible resources into that. And then we were sitting in some kind of uh, restaurant with Lukash and decided to make some really small game together, which uh, was fun because uh, it didn't kind of push us to any kind of resources and publishers and meetings and whatever. So that's when we decided to make this little funny game, which is kind of very, <laughs> it was a weird idea, but at this point I'm really glad that we made this game because it was our first published game and it was the Ghost in the Sheet game. So i just show you a little. So it was 2007 we released our first TV game, which was called Ghost in the Sheet, and it was done uh, using a much uh, kind of uh, easier, uh, easier take on resources, and we kind of threw away all the characters, and we just, you know, came with this slideshow uh, presentation, which allowed us actually to make the game. And also it was important because this game was localized into many languages, so we kind of tackled all the aspects of the game creation, not only just, you know, putting, uh, putting together some story or puzzles or something, but we actually kind of understood what it takes to make the game from this intro screen to the kind of closing credits. And I think this is one of the most uh, underestimated aspects of the young studios that they kind of think that they can make a big game because they are, for example, good programmers or they are good artists. But to make a game, it really takes you much more. It's really have to, you have to understand there are much more kind of uh, things involved to put the game on the market. So that was for us, uh, I think, the defining experience because the game was out, we got reviews, some were really good, some were really horrible. We deserved them both. <laughs> but but uh, at the end of the day, it was the game which uh, kind of uh, put CB a software on the map. And it was back then, it was call, called CB, like Cardboard Box Entertainment, because we kind of uh, make uh, games with this kind of budget, you know, living under the bridge in the cardboard boxes. So it was, yeah, internet, we have to turn this wheel to make some power. So that was. Uh, that was that was those in the sheet actually. Uh, yeah, you can see also the rest because then I move on for something. You know, the thing with this game was that it was not a typical point and click game in aspect of the inventory. You have a paranormal school skill because you are playing as a ghost, so you have to manipulate your environment in a quite a clunky way to, for example, hunt the rats here. So yeah, the game was pretty. It has a lot of moments where it was absolutely silly and outright offending to some people, of course, because we tackled a lot of issues without thinking about any kind of political correctness. Uh, anyway, this was the Ghost in the Sheet. After that, we have a brief episode because we both with Lukash work for uh, Peregrius. Uh, you might have uh, known the adventure game called Tale of a Hero, so I was doing work for this Lukash as well, so we were working for this. And then we came back to our development, and that's where the original Julia game, which not the Among the Stars you might know, but the original from 2012, uh, appeared. Uh, I will not talk much about Julia today, because I will do very kind of extensive post-mortem with Lukáš tomorrow. We will speak about many aspects, so I don't want to show you things you might even even know, but uh, just to let you know, uh, I would like to make a short comparison of the quality we did in 2011 and I will show you what basically just then became of Julia Among the Stars and as I told you this is not the point of my today's presentation because I would like really to spend time tomorrow with talking about all the aspects from crowdfunding to production to doing such a game just by two people. So this is how the 
old Julia looked like before we remade it. So you can see the bike from C64 games. Actually, I was inspired by a very old C64 games with the stars. It was called this one. You would not know it. <laughs> and this is this is basically how it looked back then. And what happened actually that people liked the story and they didn't like the presentation because it was like really uh, at, the, at that point was the best we could do and uh, also we still took it as some kind of night side project we worked you know during really night but still the game you went out and it again this goes to the market which was side effect of cryogenic sleep. Yeah. Uh, so it was again a defining experience for, for us because every game you release no matter uh, what you do good or wrong basically it teaches you something, it brings you to some ideas, you learn more about the uh, uh, game systems, you uh, learn more about the gameplay mechanics, you learn more about immersion, but also about storytelling. So, you know, it's, uh, uh, if I would answer the same question which passed a couple of minutes ago, I would say, you know, it's like we did the best we could and now we can do hopefully better, but it's like, it's our journey. So, this is the time when we also, the original Julia, as you can see, was conceived as a kind of uh, interface based game. You, uh, it was like a, uh, uh, inspired by Snatcher, for example, where you just took from a list of choices and they were severely limited, so there was not much of an actual gameplay. M more like a, it was more like a visual novel in a way, with puzzles. Just for a comparison, and uh, tomorrow you will see much more of it, I will show you that. Uh, I just this is how um, the among the stars look. So basically, we redone the whole interface uh, to um, to a fully visual game with uh, tons of different interactive stuff and with a full screen exploration. But that's as I told you a subject for tomorrow's talk. Uh, just uh, I wanted you to compare how uh, originally called enhanced edition and we enhanced it to the extent that we remade it and called it among the stars. So uh, that's uh, basically uh, our almost uh, almost uh, last project. I will just show you the, the trailer, which is. Greetings, Rachel Manners. Please exit the cryo chamber and proceed immediately to the main deck. We need to stay focused, Rachel. You're the last surviving member of the expedition, and you need to finish what you started. But it was the Julia and our uh, latest, if I don't count Midnight, uh, count midnight Order, uh, it was uh, our latest release game. Uh, but uh, in between there was a very depressive period. Many of you know about our publisher experience. Many of you know that we've been really on the, once again, on the kind of edge of personal and other bankruptcy after the first Julia. And we tried a couple of things. And first uh, thing we tried was uh, to uh, tackle uh, 
a different market than the adventure game, so we created a game called Vampires, and uh, it was a kind of a funny game where we totally veered of the formula of the stories, and we just created a game where we have to save vampires by guiding them to their coffins before, <laughs> before they die. And I just show you a little bit of this. So it's 2007. <laughs> And nothing was great, and they refused it. 
and that's how it goes with the funding today. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's a that's a typical story. I know. Uh, I believe many of you know this story. And uh, again, you know, as you can see, a CV software it didn't have much uh, much well uh, impact on our psychical uh, or sanity. So it was not very nice, and it was even worse in the winter. Because I was asked by, and he unfortunately is not here with us, with Marco Gizek, he was working on Jerry McPartney game, which was now released. And he told me, yeah, you know, I have some guys and they are probably able to invest. And I have this idea about a, a game which would take place on a steamship. I said, okay, so I, let me write a story. So I write a story and I wrote a story about a guy who is this kind of uh, con artist, who is kind of scamming people. He's very brilliant at that and trying to kind of uh, uh, persuade people to give him money or he would sell them Eiffel Tower if he want. And that's basically, and he is going to this luxury cruise filled with uh, incredibly rich people, all the businessmen, and he's trying to kind of get the most of it. And uh, not only for the cruise, but also after. So that was the idea about the story. And I can show you a bit of this because it already had a, quite some gameplay. I, will, uh, I'm, uh, I apologize, the very beginning of this is in German, I will switch it very soon into English in the game, but on the video I was not able in this short time to, to kind of recompile it because it's on old Unity and... Okay, I am there. In this room, Laura, irgendwo die Unterlagen, die you can also see the character from this team. It's always a clever game. It's a very dummy character. 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 Genug davon. Nora könnte jeden Moment hier sein. Ich muss so schnell wie möglich hier weg. Eine ziemlich alte Ausgabe des Boston American. A fairly recent issue of Boston American. There's something underneath. And you can see it's like a 3D, but with a with imitate the two and a half D because the character is just in there are switchable cameras and. It's a billiard cue. Clanny must be quite a player. Who races on a cue on cruise? Yeah. I don't think I'm good. Yeah. Good. This pocket is empty. Nothing in this one either. So you can kind of see this one a pretty typical point of view. Single girl and key. Finally I'm getting somewhere. I'll just finish this one and move on. I think I recognize this painting. It's a replica of the Dam at Zandam by Claude Monet. I'll put it down. So anyway, uh, there, uh, because I'm in a time pre pressure, I will now skip this. I would like to uh, invite you to download our free game called Boredom Agustin Cordes. If you know Agustin, is the uh, creator of Asylum. He, he created Scratches game. And when we were in a hotel uh, in the Gamescom 2014, 13, we created in two days with Lukas a game about him. So you can try this free. And, uh, I will skip everything else I had and I would like to um, show you what we are uh, go, uh, working on now. It's a bit different than what you see before. Uh, I would ask you a question. How many of you are parents? Raise your hands. Oh, that's a whole lot. And I know <laughs> in this case, he has a daughter, right? Yes. Yeah, sure. And what would you do if your daughter never came home? Um, yeah. I, that is something I don't want to think about. <laughs> so our short teaser is for the first time ever to play now.
<laughs> okay, um, so I will just tell you, sh because we are in the time pressure, I think that's a time for questions almost. This game is uh, pretty much very similar to adventure game. It's not a pure adventure game, as you would not probably expect a pure adventure game from us. Although I showed you a couple of attempts. And uh, you have an inventory, you have, uh, you are kind of, uh, the puzzles or not puzzles, where the activities are integrated in the environment, so it's not a walking simulator where you would just walk and look around, you have to actually do things deep here. And it's a pretty dark game, as you can see. But unfortunately, uh, majority of the things here would be a spoiler, so I will just try to balance on the eggshells and not kind of try to reveal things. But uh, I would kind of like to invite you for questions and uh, you can ask about anything you see. So, take one or two questions if anyone has. Yes. Oh, hi. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the music actually of your games. So I like the music in your games, especially Destiny, your first one, and the last one. I just wanted to know, firstly, what language was it sung in? And also, who did you work with, with for the music in your games? Because you said it's just the two of you. How do you bring music into your games? Um, I'm actually a composer. Oh, nice. I'm actually teaching composition at the university in Brno. But uh, in the first, uh, the first song was uh, composed by me and sung by my friend in Turkish. Oh. Because I wanted to sound kind of alien. <laughs> 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 and back then, um, for me, the language really sounded uh, very poetic, but not, uh, not common, which was the point. And uh, the, this song here is uh, sang in a uh, Czech language, but not exactly, but it's kind of Moravian dialect. And that's because the game is set to this landscape. We kind of uh, localize it to Moravia with some weird stuff and with some kind of odd things here and there. But basically the place is kind of localized to place of Moravia, which is southern part of Czech Republic. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the last game you showed us on um, Unreal 4 engine, is that also still just one person doing all the environments? Yes. You can see him here. He's sitting next to it. How, how long did it take you to, let's say, create, say, um, like a forest, for example? How long did it take you? Well, I don't know exactly because well, we are working to multiple projects now, so okay. basically it took around two or two, two, three yeah. months. Okay. But not full time. Uh, no, okay. okay, well I think we're gonna wrap it up there. If you do have more questions, you will find Piano yeah, over the entire weekend, so do go and speak to it. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. And I, uh, if you want to know more about the Julia production, which is the release game, tomorrow I will have a very detailed post-mortem about this stuff, so feel free to drop by and listen to this too. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, well.